I know the secret to a healthy relationship backed by science, and I'm going to tell you right now. Oh, yeah. There's something called bids for attention in relationships. These can range from direct questions like, how do I look today, to simple requests, to statements like, it's so rainy outside, and more. When your partner says something like this to you, there are four ways you can react. You can respond indifferently, negatively, minimally, or enthusiastically, and this last one is ideal. In fact, the number of times that a couple responded to or rejected their partner's bid for attention can predict how long their relationship will last. We know this because of research done by John and Julie Gottman. They found that couples that had stayed together six years after being married turned towards each other's bids for attention 85% of the time. Couples that were separated turned towards each other only roughly a third of the time. For example, if one of the partners said, oh, it's so rainy outside. The couples that stayed together likely had a partner that said, oh, you're right, it is so rainy. Or something else that responded positively to their partner's request for attention. While the couples that separated likely didn't say anything to their partner's comment or dismissed it by saying something like, okay. To me, this next thing is the most important thing to remember. The successful couples did not respond positively to each other 100% of the time. There are times in any relationship when your partner has a bid for attention and you are tired, you're overworked, and you just don't have it in you to respond enthusiastically. But that's okay. Because the Gottmans found that every time a partner reacted positively to a bid for attention, it put good faith into what they call an emotional bank account. This emotional bank account is built on trust and recognition that even if your partner doesn't respond positively 100% of the time, you know that next time they probably will. You can recognize that maybe something's going on with them at the moment that has nothing to do with me, so it's okay. This allowance and positive attitude towards a relationship is instrumental in couples knowing that their love and trust will be given and received. I know the secret to a healthy relationship. Yo, I love this video though. Cool. Backed by science. Give her a little bit of an eye open look. No, I love this. This, I talked to my partner about this. Uh, it's so true for our relationship. Um, because of the people we are, we're incredibly considerate and we're very interested in the person that we're with. Like super, super, super invested in the person we're with. And we want to react. So Again, we're still really new into this relationship, but because of our personalities, I don't see it changing because again, I grew up with nine siblings. I have parents. I've had other romantic relationships. I know this about myself. I'm always invested in my people's ideas and thoughts. Now, my partners, most of all. So I'm much more, I'm going to be much more invested in my, in my partner, right? Just basically, without a doubt, like without hesitation, I'm just always going to be more invested in him his thoughts and how much attention I should be paying. So today we went to the store and he started ranting about PlayStation versus Xbox versus Nintendo and something boy, something. And I kept looking at him and I was like, and I looked at him and he was like, what? And I was like, question, how much, pay, how much attention do I have to pay to this? He goes, what do you mean? I was like, well, how much do I have to listen to what you're saying? Or do you just need to talk about it? And he goes, um, you don't have to listen that hard. Just listen to this part. And I was like, okay. And then he would talk about it. And I'd be like, okay. Because if he talks about something I don't understand, like I can't conceptualize, I can't follow the conversation, but I can absolutely support his need to vent about it. And obviously he has boyfriends. He can go talk to boys about these things. I don't, I'm a boy, but I'm not that much of a boy. So that's an example of when I won't always be able to positively reinforce or meet him where he's at but the positive reinforcement comes from the fact that i'm acknowledging hey look i don't know how to listen to this and respond back to you and then he'll say like oh you don't have to just listen to me which is a version of positive reinforcement i feel we're also like i love yous are very important like if he says i love you i don't like say i don't love you there was i don't think i saved it no there is this horrible i don't like it there's this couple prank style on YouTube. No offense. I think all those couples feel very toxic to me. But there's this couple prank style where the guy will be like, I love you, baby. And she'll like pretend she's mad. And he'll be like, what? What did I do? Why are you mad at me? And she won't say I love you back. And the joke goes on too long. And it really like hurts their partner's feelings. And so my partner and I have a rule placed in that we use safe words. So if one of us is making a joke and we're not sure if we're joking, we're like, yellow, are you joking? I can't tell. And now my feelings are like confused. I'm like, oh my God, I'm just joking. I'm so sorry. Or like, oh, actually, I'm not joking because, you know, we're fucking neurodivergent and like we don't always know what we're saying. And then um, we don't play pranks because I don't like those and he doesn't like them. And then we don't... Um, we don't do anything that might 
actually trigger if it's a joke something that we are we struggle with like my borderline he wouldn't make a uh, a real joke or a prank that went too long that would directly impact my possible brain from getting triggered does that make sense like he is very cautious i'm very cautious like we we're just caught because we know each other and we're invested in each other so i would say that i think the reason one of the reasons our partnership is absolutely going to last and we're going to be healthy the whole way through you know even when we're upset is because we're good communicators and we would say hey um you know i'm having this kind of issue with my brain today like yesterday i um i went far away we call it going far away. I kind of like disassociated from my body a bit. It was because, okay, this is going to sound so crazy. We changed my food schedule yesterday. And because we changed, everything has to be consistently for me. Because we changed my food schedule yesterday because I woke up really late because um, I had gone to bed really late and then I had worked out. So I was really exhausted. I woke up late and that threw off my whole eating schedule. And by the time the evening came around, I just completely like my body just didn't know how to body. And so I disassociated a bit and I was just like sitting there and he was like, oh, like you're far away, huh? And I was like, yeah, I was like, I know I love you and I know everything's fine. I think my body is just really confused because I didn't eat. And he was like, okay, that makes sense. He's like, do you need anything? And I was like, no, I'm just going to work, I think. Because like if I can work, I can get something done, but I won't have any feelings about it. Like I just didn't have any feelings. I was going to stream yesterday. I was going to do a live show yesterday. But because I disassociated a little bit and I went away from my body and I didn't like I couldn't be in my body like I am now, I just couldn't care. Like I have no emotions. I can't really feel that I love him. I can't really feel that I want to eat. I can't really feel that I want to do anything. So what I do during those moments is I just try to be productive. It's a great time to work because then you don't feel the stress of work. You're just like working and you're not thinking about it. So you know what I mean? So that's what I did. And then I just kind of chilled and he came in and we like cuddled for a bit and we talked and it was fine. Like I kept going in and out of it a little bit. But it finally, I told him, I was like, I can't wait to go to sleep so I can wake up and not be disassociated. That'd be really great. Usually sleep helps or just like giving myself enough hours or time. Um, we're pretty used to this at this point. Like him and I are really good about communicating about it. Um, but yeah, like safe words in place, acknowledging each other's opinions. When someone says something, we like comment on it. We're very like, but then again, we want to tell everything to each other. We want to talk about everything. We want to comment on the rain together today. We went and got a cappuccino and we went grocery shopping and everything from, hey, what do you think those people are thinking over there to not being on our phones when we're together? But like, we don't have to. Here's the thing. I don't have to ask him to not be on his phone. I've dated people like that in the past who like would not get off their phones even when they were with me. I never have to ask him. He never has to ask me like, can you get off your phone? Because if we're in public and we're at a restaurant together, why would we be on our phones when we could be with each other? But I know couples, I know friends that even if I traveled in to see them from out of state, they couldn't get off their phones. And it's interesting. Now it's fine. Everyone has a different relationship with their technology, with their phone, with everything. But yeah, like we want to be together. So of course we're interested in every little thing the other person has to say. You know what I mean? It's it's just about peop like finding the right people to vibe with, with in the way that makes sense, right? Um, Yeah. And the communication style I think is really, really important. But I thought that video was really lovely. And I was like, okay, cool. That's like a nice reassurance. Like my parents are the same way. Like we – they talk it out. They mention something. They, but, but you know what? My family is really attentive that way. Hmm. How much of this is just my social bubble? Like, my family's really in attentive. Like, yeah, if somebody says something, we acknowledge it. We'll have a conversation around it. Also, like, if I am on my phone and I'm, like, writing to the Discord or something and my partner's talking to me, I'm like, Why d I can't do both, right? I can't do both. And, like, if we're watching One Piece and he'll start talking to me, I'm like, oh, I can't do both. I can't do both. You have to pause one. Like, we, I just bring up my my limitations. I'll be like, hey, I love you, but I, I can't, like, do both. Or, wait, let me send this message. Okay, now I have to, like, put... I'm paying attention to you. Do you know what I mean? Because I can't do both. I used to, I thought there was a point in my life where I swear I could do both. I swear there was a point in my life where I could text and listen to people, but it doesn't exist anymore. Critical Kitty says, I think she's using the red, yellow, and green in a similar way to how BDSMers use it. Yes. So I took my safe words from BDSM and I just use it in my relationship. I use it in my friendships. I use it with my friends. Like I use it with people. I'm like, yellow. I use it with my siblings. I'm like, ah, red. I'm not having this conversation anymore. 
or red. I can't talk about this anymore. We need to like reconvene in a better mood. Thank you.